In the wake of recent protests against police brutality, a self-styled alternative community has sprung up in Seattle. It happened after police withdrew to the edges of the city's Capitol Hill neighborhood in an attempt to de-escalate tensions with demonstrators. Activists have since occupied and assumed control over a six-block stretch of land. The makeshift city is known as both CHAZ, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, and CHOP, the Capitol Hill Organized Protest. Last week, the encampment caught President Trump's attention. In a tweet directed at Governor Jay Inslee and Seattle's mayor, the president threatened to take back the city from so-called anarchists if officials fail to do it themselves. Paul Roberts is a reporter for the Seattle Times. He has been following both protesters and counter-protesters inside the zone. He joins me now. Paul, thank you for joining us. This encampment is located around what is now an abandoned police precinct. How did all of this start? Well, it was, a, it was a sort of a focal point for protest over the last few weeks. And um, <clears throat> last week, the city essentially uh, withdrew and uh, abandoned temporarily the, the East Precinct uh, Police Department and essentially gave the land over in a way to uh, a sort of a diverse group of protesters who have since transformed it into a bit of a, I suppose, a protest village. And um, it's become a focal point both in the city and also, as you pointed out, nationally. A um, lot of questions about what goes on there, uh, what the protesters' objectives are, and, um, you know, really what the future holds for it. So you have spoken with people with varying political views in the zone. Who are they and what do they want? It's, it's really varied. I mean, you have people who have been, you know, central to the Black Lives Matter movement, um, a lot of people who support them. Um, it's also attracted folks who are just looking for a place to be. Uh, there are a fair number of homeless people there. It's one of the, it's turned out to be one of the safest places for homeless people in the city. Um, it's also become something of a tourist attraction. You'll have a lot of uh, people coming through for selfies, um, families coming in with kids, uh, sort of a, a living uh, civics lesson, if you will, and, and how democracy works. Uh, you have a lot of business owners in and around the area who are uh, not exactly sure what it means for the status of their business. Uh, you, you know, keep in mind the city, like most cities, is in the process of reopening after the pandemic, and this is adding to a lot of uncertainty for uh, businesses and for the city generally. Well, some say a large group of protesters want anarchy. Is that true? What kind of structure is there inside the zone? Well, I think we probably want to start by defining anarchy. So if we mean it in sort of the general way, that means lawless, disorganized, chaotic. And that's not the case. I mean, what I've seen as a fairly skeptical you know, outsider um, is a, a diverse group that's got a number of objectives. Um, mainly it's about creating some sort of a at least short-term sustainable uh, community. So people are worried about things as basic as water supply. Uh, people are planting gardens. Uh, there is a sort of an informal security network that helps sort of maintain order inside and also tries to protect this enclave from in outside intruders. It's you know become quite a magnet, not just for the media and for tourists, but for uh, folks maybe on the right side of the spectrum who um, are uh, opposed to you know what they regard as Antifa. Um, so it's it's really basically trying to reproduce a lot of the functions of society generally, but do it in a short term, uh, very in, in the short term and from limited resources. Uh, so it, it's it's um, really drawn a lot of attention and raised a lot of questions. You know. At the same time, you have some longtime residents, uh, in addition to the folks who have come in and are now in that six-block area. So do city officials have any kind of long-term plan for dealing with this zone? What are they willing to allow? Right now, I think it, this is a, a, um, a way for the city to let off steam politically. Uh, we were at a flashpoint like many cities were several weeks ago, with a lot of very intense protests, some turned violent, some turned quite destructive. Um, you've got a massive amount of momentum behind the Black Lives Matter movement, and that's also brought in other reform movements as well. Um, and I think that the city saw this as a, at the very least, a short-term way to let off some of that political steam while it paused and thought about what to do next, whether, you know, what to do about police reform, um, what to do about the 
you know, the, the prospects, economic and political prospects for marginal communities, communities of color. So I think it's basically a, a allowed the city to sort of stay in a holding pattern while it figures out some of these longer term challenges. Um, I think in the meantime, inside, you know, you've got organizers who are essentially trying to do the same thing, figure out what they should do next, um, what steps to take, what pressure to put on, um, what demands to make. And this place is giving them a physical, uh, a physical place um, to have some solace and, and to sort of collect themselves as they prepare for those next steps. It'll be really interesting to see, I think you called it a pause a moment ago, how long city officials intend to let this pause last. Paul Roberts for us. Paul, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.